Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate at St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. As we continue our series on Pope Francis' apostolic exhortation, Rejoice and Be Glad, on the call to holiness in today's world, today's Do You Know question is, do you know why Pope Francis calls the Beatitudes the a Christian identity card? Pope Francis entitles Chapter 3 of Rejoice and Be Glad in light of the Master. What he does in this chapter, the longest of his document, what he does in this chapter is he, he examines the words of Jesus, our Master, uh, as the guides and light to our, on our journey to holiness. Um, and he does this by unpacking the Beatitudes, which he calls the very heart of Jesus' message, of uh, Jesus' image of God even. Um, and so what he does in this chapter, he unpacks each Beatitudes and examines it in light of what, it, uh, what is the guide and the kind of a, a path that it offers for us on our journey to holiness. Um, in light of Jesus' words as the master who teaches us that path. Uh, and so as a result, what happens is Pope Francis takes each Beatitude and examines it and then kind of gives you a kind of quick summary at the end of each Beatitude that he reshapes it as uh, what it means to be holy. And so what we'll do in this video and the next is actually kind of unpack each of the Beatitudes, four for this video and four for the next video. Before we actually get to the Beatitudes, actually, Pope Francis states that those people who live the Beatitudes, uh, by their very nature, are going to be countercultural. Why? Because the values of Jesus in the Beatitudes are countercultural. They really counter the way the world operates and the way the world's values are. And so, so first of all, that, that's a major attitude uh, perspective that we need to have with regards to living out the Beatitudes. However, he will insist, as Jesus does, that those who adhere to the demands and the uh, obligations of the Beatitudes, these, these people will indeed be happy or blessed, um, as the translation goes. And so we, examine, we will examine each Beatitude. And the very first Beatitude is uh, what Pope Francis calls, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, the poor in spirit are those who live a life of simplicity and integrity, uh, allowing God's values to moderate their hearts and their minds and not enslaved by the values of the world. And as a result, they live simple lives and they, they trust and rely on the Lord, allowing God's values, as I say, to rule their minds and hearts. Uh, and so as a result of that, a quote that I'd like to use from Pope Francis is number 67 of his um, document in which he states that the gospel invites us to pee, uh, to peer into the depths of our hearts and to see where we find our security in life. For wealth ensures nothing. And therefore, trust and confidence in God and relying on God and working by God's value are really what is important. And Francis sums it up with the summary at the end of this uh, beatitude by saying that, blessed being poor of heart, that is holiness. Uh, picks up the next beatitude, which is called, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now, the meek are those who eschew, or really uh, do uh, not allow pride, vanity, uh, and jealousy, or an air superiority, or better than the, uh, the next person, whatever, to impact their life. Because these kinds of attitudes entice us all uh, in our uh, human interaction. Instead, these are the people who place their trust, again, in confidence only in the Lord. In the Old Testament tradition, uh, the meek were the ones who had the interior poverty, uh, again, placing trust and confidence in the Lord. The term that is used in the Old Testament is the term anawim. These are the poor and the meek of the Lord who seek humility and place their trust and confidence in the Lord. Uh, so as a, as a result of, of that, I would like to just quote again from Pope Francis uh, in this particular uh, document, number 74, where he says, 
Meekness is yet another expression of the interior poverty of those who put their trust in God alone. Indeed, in the Bible, the same word anawim usually refers both to the poor and to the meek. Someone might object, if I am that, if I am that meek, they will think that I am an idiot, a fool, or a weakling. At times they may, but so be it. It is always better to be meek, for then our deepest desires will be fulfilled. And so Francis sums up this particular beatitude with the statement, reacting with meekness and humility, that is holiness. And then he moves to the third beatitude, which is, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And here uh, Francis speaks about this whole notion of we as human beings tend to flee away from pain and suffering. And yet he insists that we know in human life and human journey, the cross is an integral part of that. So suffering and, and, and pain will be part of that. However, uh, those who uh, mourn with others or those who really seek out others uh, wear a pain in their own lives and are willing to reach and touch others in their own lives. And there's a powerful statement that Francis does in this particular beatitude that I'd like to share with you. Um, uh, and, and this is, has to do with number 76 in, the, in his um, uh, document. He says, a, a person who sees things as they truly are and sympathizes with pain and sorrow is capable of touching life's depths and finding authentic happiness. Such persons are unafraid to share in the, of, in the suffering of others. They do not flee from painful situations. Rather, they sense that the other is flesh of our flesh and are not afraid to draw near, even to touch their wounds. And so Francis now again summarizes this particular uh, beatitude with knowing how to mourn with others, that is holiness. And then Francis moves on to the fourth beatitude, which is that of blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Um, now, people who hunger and thirst for righteousness do not allow the world's values again to, to actually impact them, but rather they will be satisfied. These are people who work for justice, and they will be satisfied even if they do not see the fruits of their labor come to fruition. Rather, what will happen is they will be continually working for justice. And by the way, justice is defined as right relationship treating others with dignity, honor, respect, and self-worth. Um, so if we are just, uh, we will act justly always in our actions and in relationship with others. Uh, uh, you know, people who work for justice typically eschew all sorts of manipulations, uh, corruption, um, petty interest and so on, because they see the concerns and the, the value of others as significant in their interaction and relationship. And I'd like to quote again Pope Francis uh, in number 79 of this document, where he emphasizes that true justice comes about in people's lives when they themselves are just in their decisions. It is expressed in their pursuit of justice for the poor and the weak. Uh, especially in justice towards those who are most vulnerable. And therefore he summarizes this particular beatitude with the statement, hungering and thirsting for righteousness, that is holiness. And so I hope this has helped to explain just a bit of uh, these first four beatitudes, and we will continue with the beatitudes in our next video, unpacking the next four, and then bring this chapter to conclusion in the third video. Uh, but I hope this is helped to explain just a bit of why Pope Francis calls the beatitude a Christian identity card, and I hope you'll return again to more Do You Know series questions as we continue to unpack Pope Francis' document. Thank you very much.